Hello again, and welcome to Natal, a weekly podcast about the celebrations going on that specific day. There will be some we know too well and some we have yet to hear of. Join me, and together we'll learn something new, eat yummy food, and have a good time. Today is National Pencil Day. March 30th was chosen because it was on this day, 158 years ago, in 1858, that Hyman Lippmann received the first patent for attaching an eraser to the end of a pencil. Most of us are probably familiar with erasers on pencils. It's kind of a must. Unless it's a pencil meant for artwork, most of us would choose the pencil with an eraser over one without it. The eraser is almost more important now than the pencil itself. It allows us to forgive and forget our mistakes and act as though it never happened. On today's episode, I talk about where it all began, where it is now, did you know that there's actually a pencil museum, and where the pencil may be headed in the future, or more importantly, does the pencil even have a future? The pencil has a history that may be unknown to most of us. Now let me first ask you this. What is the core of a pencil made of? If your immediate reaction was to say lead, as mine would have been, well, we'd both be wrong. We think pencils are made out of lead because early styluses in ancient civilizations were made out of lead. Now, if you're confused because when you hear stylus, you think of that pen-like instrument with a rubber knob that you use on your iPad, well, I guess I'm the first one to tell you that that's the modern definition of a stylus, but we'll get back to that soon. Let's go back to ancient times for a moment. Scribes used to write with styluses made of lead, which is why we still think a pencil's core is lead, but actually the core is made of non-toxic graphite. In 1564, a large graphite deposit was discovered in England. It was quickly preferred because it left a darker mark than lead. Unfortunately, it's such a weak material, it required a base. It didn't take very long before the wooden surrounding emerged and then, hey, the modern pencil was born. Pencils were imported from England until the Revolutionary War. I don't know, maybe they became a little salty? Who knows? But you know pencil company Dixon Ticonderoga? I don't know about you, but I always say that they're the best. Because of the eraser, but let's not get sidetracked. Ticonderoga was one of the first American pencil companies to kickstart the industry here. And then the rest is kind of history. While looking into pencils, I came across a few interesting things. First, I went on Dixon Ticonderoga's website, and honestly the first thing that caught my eye was this image that said Dixon Recycle. Yes, I totally support recycling programs. Feel free to roll your eyes in three... Two. Although the recycling program is unrelated to pencils, the program allows people to recycle the praying art markers. One of the best aspects of this program is that the shipping is covered by the company. Often people who want to help save the planet need to do so by taking money out of their own pocket. And it's nice that this large corporation is willing to be completely involved, especially since the recycling program benefits their production, I'm sure. I wonder if they spend less money on the recycling program than they do reproducing new markers. The second thing I found is tucked away in northwest England. Feel like adding a trip to the Cumberland Pencil Museum on your next visit? You can get there by car, train, or bus. There, you can get an in-depth visual presentation on the history of the pencil, attend numerous workshops or demonstrations by professional artists on how to get the best out of your fine art pencils, you could buy pencils, of course, or you can even enter in art competitions. It may not be the most interesting museum visit unless you're a kid, an artist, or appreciate art, But I love that this is available at all. Art seems to be slowly dwindling all over the world. Or maybe it's just being revolutionized by digital technology. Which is why I was really surprised to come across this next thing. So maybe you can't afford a trip to England. But maybe you can to New York? Next time you're in Manhattan, you should stop by CW Pencil Enterprise. It's literally a pencil store. Probably the largest variety of pencils you've ever seen. Pencils vary by company, style, year, and price. You can even order custom-made pencils if you want for an event or just for fun. I was very surprised to find this store, and out of curiosity and liking to support small businesses, I decided to buy a pencil online from CW Pencil Enterprise. I decided to go for a vintage pencil. I wasn't sure how much I wanted to spend. I mean, for a couple bucks at Target, I can get a box of pencils, so to spend the same amount just for one pencil was kind of hard. There were two-digit amounts available, and I was curious to see if there was pencil worth three digits or more, but I didn't come across any. The pencil I bought was a third school 6303 pencil by Eberhard Faber. The store believes this pencil was born in the late 1960s. When the box first came, I was a little confused. I wasn't expecting such a large package for a pencil, but I won't complain. It is a vintage pencil after all. At first, I must have assumed it was a purchase from Amazon or something, because I opened it without paying attention to the name, and then I was greeted with a nice little note. Hello, I hope you enjoy your lovely vintage pencil, Caitlin. 
And of course, it's written in pencil. The pencil was $4. I like how the shipping was almost the same price for a total of $7. Definitely the most I've ever spent on a pencil. Right next to the receipt was a custom-made yellow pencil that has the company's name and address on it. Then directly underneath was a yellow envelope tied in black and white string with a little bow. I almost felt like I was opening a secret message, but no, it was just a pencil. And one without an eraser, I might add. I figured if I was going to go old school, I should go sans eraser. I wasn't expecting it to be sharpened, but at least it's ready to be used. Unless it's not supposed to be used. Oh well, I'll be definitely taking advantage of my $4 pencil, that's for sure. For those kicking in their seats saying who the hell cares about pencils, it's all about pens, next we discuss the never-ending battle. Are you team pencil or team pen? Pencil versus pen is not the only battle that was ensued. Some argue between pencil or mechanical pencil, or battle between specific pencil companies, but today we're only going to stick to graphite versus ink. So which do you pick? Me, personally, I'm team black pen, and I do emphasize on the black. I don't really like to use blue pens, but I've matured enough to get over it and use it if there's nothing else around. I prefer pens because you can't erase your mistakes. And yes, we're going to act like pens with erasers never came into existence, because they suck anyway. So pens force me to be careful, especially if I'm ever doing something like math problems. I think that all the pencil has going for it is the ability to properly erase and maybe how it feels in the hand. The pros for pencils seem to be the cons about pens, where it can be a little too bulky or slippery. And if you're a lefty like me, then that ink stain is ugly and has been haunting us since childhood. But at the end of the day, I choose pens simply because pens last longer, they don't have to be sharpened, and the cap prevents the point from sticking you in the leg when it's in your pocket. But hey, maybe there's a side of pencils I'm completely unaware of, and if so, totally fill me in. You can email me a message or even a voice recording. Maybe at the end of the day, all this arguing is nonsense anyway, since pencils or pens may not even have a future for very long. Introducing the Graphicore Portable Word Processor. Not only can the Graphicore be used to write anything from a shopping list to a best-selling novel, but it can also be used to create amazing graphics and even perform advanced calculations. My last question for you today is, do you own a modern stylus or digital pen of some sorts? If so, which one and what do you use it for? Digital pens vary just like regular pens in size, shape, color, and quality. There seems to be a large variety, depending on what you're looking for and how much you're willing to spend. A couple years ago, I bought the Wacom Bamboo tablet and pen as a gift for someone because she had the potential to do great things, but never tried digital art. You ever buy someone a gift and regretted it because you fell in love with it? Well, yeah, that's kind of what happened to me, so I eventually ended up buying myself one. I'm not an artist by any means, but I do like to dabble here and there for fun, especially maybe if I'm watching TV. But it was also when I found the free program Paint.net. It was the first free art program I found that wasn't crappy. Having used Photoshop and Corel Painter in the past, I am well aware of its limits, but it's definitely a few stories up from Microsoft Paint. A lot of artists do great things with only a few services and don't really need big budget Adobe programs. Paint.net is definitely something worth trying if you're first starting out or want to maybe introduce your kids or encourage your kids to use a computer for art. There are always new technologies coming out, but I was really impressed when I heard about Slate. It's critical for new artists to merge themselves in the digital world, but often artists love the old school pencil to paper look and feel. Kind of like how some people enjoy reading a real book in hand versus an ebook. Well, if that's kind of the artist you are, then you might like Slate. Slate has a few pieces. First, there's these three rings. First, there's these rings that you can place on any writing device to give it digital power. That's a pen, pencil, marker, whatever you like. Then second, you place your paper of choice on the actual slate, which really is just kind of like a modernized techie clipboard. And last but not least, you draw, pencil to paper. And through Bluetooth connection between the slate and your iPad, for example, your drawing instantly appears. Slate looks really cool, and if I were an artist, I wouldn't be able to resist giving it a try. I don't know for sure if pencils are going to be around forever. I'd like to think so. I can't picture a world without pencils. But then again, I never pictured a world where I could draw on paper and it immediately show on my computer. Technology advances as fast as we're willing to allow it. And it's exciting to be alive at this interesting traditional point in time in history. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see where it goes. I really want to thank you all for listening. This episode marks the last episode for the month of March. I honestly don't know how long I'll be doing this podcast, but I have a lot of fun doing it, even though it takes a lot of work. Hopefully this podcast continues to grow, so in the near future I'll be able to incorporate interviews and take the podcast to the next level. So please stick around and tell your friends and family. I'm excited for next week's episode, because it's going to be the first food national celebration. Also, next week's episode will be on a Friday, unlike the usual Wednesday, so stay tuned. Last but not least, if you want to email me, you can reach me at natalpodcast.outlook.com. That's N-A-T-L podcast at Outlook.com. Have a great day.